Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome. I'm excited for this Sunday morning sermon here at Faith Christian Church. I'm Pastor Kay here in the city of Bedford, Texas, between Dallas and Fort Worth. And again, I say good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning sermon. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for what you have for your people. We thank you for the living word. Father, we ask that you be a blessing to each and every one of your people. We ask that you be an encouragement to each and every one of your people. Father, we ask that you open my eyes that we may behold the wondrous things of thy law. Father, we thank you. Search my heart and guide my thoughts. Lord, if there be any wrong way in me, lead me now in the way everlasting. Decrease me that you may increase right now. Let your word reach out to your people. Let this word be a confirming word to your people right now, right now, in Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Welcome, welcome, and good morning. I'm excited for this word on this morning. God bless you, Facebook Live. God bless you, all the parishioners here at Faith Christian Church. We God bless you for all the ones who are here to have an ear to hear what thus saith the Lord. Let's go to God right now to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, verse number 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Excuse me. 1 Peter chapter 3. And I'm just going to give you this verse, verse number 22, from the New Living Translation. And we'll paint the picture from there. It says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 22 from the New Living Translation, Now Christ has gone to heaven. He is seated in the place of honor next to God. And all the angels and authorities and powers accept his authority. Beloveds, if I could paint this picture and give you a title to this text, Kingdom living. Kingdom living. Kingdom living. Beloved, as Christians, as Christians, we are privileged at the point of salvation to belong to God's family. Uh, we, we are a community with Jesus Christ as the founder and as the foundation. Everyone in this community is related. Everyone in this community are brothers and sisters in Christ and are loved equally by God. Beloved, it's, it's because Christ is the foundation of our family, we must be devoted, we must be loyal, we must be faithful to Jesus Christ. And it's in our obedience, beloved, as Christians, we can show Christ. We accept the challenges of life. As Christians, we can show Christ. We accept the challenges of life. In obedience, we can accept the challenges of life. As Christians, we can pick up our cross daily and follow. Jesus Christ in our heart. As I go a little further, beloveds, we got to understand that's kingdom living. That's kingdom living, beloveds, because God provides, first of all, he provides his patience. He, God prepares his provision 
but also God paints his picture. He does this, beloved, because that's kingdom character. And in the midst of kingdom character, we see kingdom living. And in how we see that God provides his patience, he waits for our repentance. Uh, but also God prepares his provision because the only one that holds the judgments of our life is Jesus Christ. And he desires for us to accept his provisions to be saved. But not only that, beloved, not only does God provide his patience, not only does God prepare his provisions, but God paints his picture. And that's a blessing, beloved, because that leads us in how we see First Peter and how we see what God is showing us in the type and shadow. That's theologically saying the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of Noah, the Ark of the Family in the midst of Jesus Christ because it takes us back to understand the Lord Jesus Christ who is now seated at the right hand of the Father who gives us an opportunity to see how God has given us an illustration through Noah, he has given us an illustration because God paints the picture through the Bible. And every now and then we need to understand as kingdom citizens, in kingdom living, we discover in our hearts the gospel is alive. The gospel in the midst of the facts in our faith that Christ knew no sin. Uh, but he desired to save the sinners. Beloved, can I paint that picture? Because we all have fallen short. We all have fallen short. Romans 3 and 23. So God allows us to understand that God provides his patience. God prepares his provisions. And God paints his picture. And I go a little further, beloved, because... God shows us, watch this, Christ is the center of kingdom living. Oh, I'm going to get into detail in a minute, beloved, but I got to paint this picture. Christ is the center of kingdom living. Peter comes along in the midst of the text on today. He comes along today giving the believer, giving someone an opportunity for those who are suffering, uh, for those who are hurting. For those who need healing, uh, does anyone hear me right now? For those who are on the verge of believing and having faith that our perfect Savior, Jesus Christ, who has gone to heaven, our perfect Savior, Jesus Christ, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, and we give him honor because God has given him all authority. God has given him all power and he lives within our hearts for those who accept and believe his authority within us. And so as we go a little further, we see we all have fallen short. I'm going to say it again. We all have fallen short of God's glory. That's why, beloveds, Faith in our perfect Savior, Jesus Christ, is the only way we can receive redemption and to be justified. Oh, I said that in a 25-cent way because, beloved, faith in our perfect Savior, Jesus Christ, is the only way because God came to seek and to save the ones who are lost. Faith. And Jesus Christ is the only way because Christ came to lead us to kingdom living. Oh, beloved, nudge your neighbor and say, that's kingdom living. And in the midst of that, Christ has already made a way out of no way. Christ has come along in someone's life on today. Someone needs to hear this because they have walking away from Jesus Christ. Someone needs to hear this on today because they have not accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. And someone needs to understand, beloveds, watch this. 
No matter how this season is looking in your life, Christ makes a personal pit stop in your life today. Christ came by on this blessed Sunday morning to make a pit stop in your life to encourage you. Christ came along today to let you know in 1 Peter, uh, he still lives. Uh, for those of you who accepted salvation, he lives in your heart. He lives in your spirit. And God has allowed you to understand he is who he says he is. God does not change, beloveds. But God wants you to understand. Here it is. Kingdom living is living in character and power of God. Oh, let me knock on this door right here. Somebody needs to wake up and write this down because kingdom living is living in character and power of God. Oh, I'm going to go into detail in a minute, beloveds, because I, I'm on this canvas of life and I'm painting this picture because somebody needs to understand in the midst of hope, in the midst of our future, in the midst of knowing that Christ came along to share hope for tomorrow, to share hope for a future. Christ has made a personal pit stop in your life on today to let you know kingdom living is living in the character and power of God. Oh, yes, I'm going to go ahead and detail. Can I go a little further, beloveds? Because kingdom living, oh, that's why I first... Peter is so important, especially chapter 3. Read it for yourself. Kingdom living is understanding what 1 Corinthians 13 and 13 tells us. Oh, here it is, beloved. It says in verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 13, three things will last forever. Oh, yeah. I give you a chance to turn the pages. Three things will last forever, beloveds. In 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, it tells us they will last forever. That's why you have to understand your faith in the midst of kingdom living character and power because you believe the word of God. The word of God is true for those who have faith. And understand faith, hope, and love. Three things, beloveds. It's, it's right there in the holy book. It's in the book. It's in the book, beloveds. Faith, hope, and love. And so kingdom living life is from the inside out. Oh, go ahead, beloveds. Let me go ahead and paint that again because three things will last forever. Uh, I'm talking to some faith believers. I'm talking to some blood-bought believers on this morning. I'm talking to some ones that already accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and Redeemer. Kingdom living. And so you must have, in the midst of 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, faith, hope, and love. In the midst of that, beloveds, we understand life is from the inside out. You live life from the inside out. This word, how do I know? Because the Bible tells me this word have I hid in my heart that I will not do wrong against God. Oh, we live life as a child of God, as a Christian from the inside out, beloveds. Can I go a little further? Because having Christ this word have I hid within me. In other words, kingdom living is life from the inside out. God gives us confidence because we have faith. Faith, the grain of a mustard seed. So God gives the believer confidence. Oh, but not only that, in the midst of our faith, the grain of a mustard seed, we have confidence. Uh, that the Messiah came. We have confidence 
uh, that the Father sent the only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We have confidence that he hung, bled, and died on a hill called the skull. We have confidence that he rose on the third day. And just like with Noah showing us the type and shadow of what was to come, the ark, the ark of Noah gives us an opportunity to understand Jesus Christ even though it was in the Old Testament, oh, beloveds, but all 66 books are congruent. And so we understand not only faith, we understand hope. We have hope for tomorrow. We have hope for today. We have hope because that hope gives us joy and anticipation Oh, you know that tiptoed anticipation, that tiptoe anticipation, knowing that he's coming back. Tell your neighbor kingdom living. I got faith that he ascended into heaven. I got faith that he left the third person of the Trinity. I got faith that he's here in my heart, I got faith, not only because of the grain of a mustard seed, because I have that Hebrews 11 faith, but I also have love. And against such, there is no law. Galatians 5 and 22. I got to understand, beloveds, God gives the will of God for those who know how good and how pleasant and how loving God is. Oh, let me say it just like this. All things. Woo! Get your shout on right now. All things, because you already know. I know some Bible readers are listening right now. All things work together. Uh, uh, all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose, Romans 8 and 28. So as I go a little further, faith, hope, and love last forever. And so we must be loyal to Jesus Christ. We must be faithful to Jesus Christ, but we must be obedient. Let me help somebody right now because I'm getting ready to go to my seat. I'm going to get my shout on. You got to understand, we can show Christ. We can accept the challenges of our life if we just pick up our cross daily and follow him. Somebody needed to hear that today. Because they, they went to sleep last night and they was wondering what happened. But I want to help somebody today. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the love of the kingdom of God. God has comforted you. God has come along in your life. Even in the midst of all the things going on in this season, God has already given you an opportunity to, to know that he's already gone to heaven and he's seated at the place of honor. Oh, I'm trying to talk to somebody because I'm going to go ahead and get my shout on in a minute. I'm giving you the text, verse 22 of 1 Peter chapter 3. He's already at the place of honor. Does anyone hear me? And all angels, all authority and power Accept his authority. Did you hear what I said? Uh, he sits right there. It's called the triune God. It's called the Trinity. And so God, here it is. As you are blessing others, you set yourself up for a blessing. Oh, Tell your neighbor, I got authority. Tell your neighbor, I know what God done for me. God has given you an opportunity to understand. Had it not been for the Lord on my side. 
Oh, where would I be? So as you are blessing others, somebody right now has been blessing somebody all week long. Somebody right now has been blessing people in their lives all month long. Somebody right now has been blessing people all year long. Kingdom living. And so you are setting yourself up because God has already given you authority. Why? Because he's in the right seat. Why? Because he's in the seat of authority. Why? Because God has showed us what we are in Christ Jesus. Oh, that's good, beloveds. That's a shout because kingdom living is from the inside out. Oh, beloved, you can look at everything going on in this season. So you continue to keep on blessing. You continue to understand faith, hope, and love. You continue to understand that you are born again. You are a blood-bought believer. You are a kingdom citizen. Does anyone hear what I'm saying Oh, I'm getting ready to go to my seat, beloveds. Kingdom living is living in the character and power of God. How do I know? Because Christ told me so. And so now in the midst of Christ who has gone to heaven, in the midst of Christ seated in the place of honor and authority, in the midst of how we see God honors through our heart. Oh, beloveds, honor God through your heart. Honor God through your heart, beloveds. Oh, because you are a blood-bought believer. You are a child of God. You are who God says you are. Honor God because he's seated in the right place. He's seated in the place of righteousness. He's seated right there where he's supposed to be. So always be ready to love on others. Always be ready to honor God in your heart. Always be ready for your speech in the midst of meekness, in the midst of reverence to God, in the midst of kindness to God, in the midst of love to others. Honor God in the midst of joy and patience having good conscience to others. Honor God in the midst of because we're not ashamed. Oh, 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 I'm going to go there. Romans chapter 1, 16 and 17. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? Because it's the power of God. Woo! It's the power of God unto salvation. Tell your neighbor, I got my shout on. Kingdom living, beloveds, I'm not ashamed. Oh, in my speech, I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. In my meekness, I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. In my reverence, I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. In my kindness, I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. In my love, I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Does anyone hear what I'm saying? I'm getting my shout on because I got joy for Jesus. I got patience for Jesus. I got a good conscience for Jesus. And every now and then, we got to understand he ascended. He's going up in the heaven. And he lives in our heart, except the place where God is on it, except that he lives in your heart. Kingdom living is from the inside out. Oh, beloveds, that's authority. Oh, you got kingdom authority. Somebody needs to know that today. You got kingdom authority. Accept his authority today. Accept what Christ has given you because it was the Father who sent the Son. And whatever Christ 
has done in your life is because you accepted him. He opened the windows of heaven. Woo! 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 He opened the windows of heaven and he poured out his love on somebody today. That's kingdom, beloved. That's kingdom. Oh, touch your neighbor and tell him that's kingdom. He opened the windows of heaven. He poured out a blessing. And so now you're loving on one another. Oh, you're showing kindness to one another. Yeah, you're showing meekness to one another. You're showing peace. You're showing peace, love, joy, happiness. You're showing that. Why? Because you're showing kingdom character. You're showing kingdom love because God is giving it to you. Oh, beloved, he poured out his blessing upon you in the midst of knowing that he accomplished what he came here to do. God himself humbled himself. He put on a robe of humility. He clothed himself in righteousness so we may see the way. And he made a way out of no way. In the kingdom life, that we live. God provides his patience in the kingdom life that we live. God prepares his provisions in the kingdom life that we live. God paints the picture, beloved. Woo! So watch this. Whatever adversity you go through in life, Christ steps in to deepen your relationship with him. Oh, that's good, beloveds. Oh, that's so good. Listen, listen, listen. Whatever adversity you go through in life, Christ steps on in to deepen. Oh, he opens the windows of heaven. He's deepening your relationship with him. Tell your neighbor, deepen, deepen, deepen. He's deepening you. You're getting deeper and deeper. You're no longer scuba diving. You're going down deep. And so God is also saying this. Watch this. Somebody needs to hear this. Whatsoever consequence, whatever the consequences of your life. You once lived. You used to live those old consequences. You used to live them old situations. Somebody needs to hear this. You used to live them old circumstances. So whatever those consequences, circumstances, and situations you once lived, uh, Christ stepped on in to see you through. Oh, somebody needs to hear that. I'm pointing to you right now. I'm pointing to you and you. You used to live that old way. You used to live that old consequence. You used to live in a bad situation. But Christ stepped in. He stepped in. That's kingdom. That's kingdom. You got kingdom character. You a kingdom sensitive. I feel like preaching right now. God stepped into your muddy situation. God stepped in to your messed up situation. And he wants you to understand. I came in to see you through. Yeah. 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 Oh, look at the neighbor next to you. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Glory! Ha! Obedience is better than sacrifice. It's better than sacrifice. That's kingdom living. It's better than sacrifice. It's better, better. It's better. It's better than sacrifice. So whatever uh, life you once lived, Christ stepped in to bring you out of that life. Somebody needs to hear this. You in a life situation now. You are on life support right now. And God is stepping in right now. Oh, somebody needs to hear this. God is stepping in right now to bring you out of that life. He's stepping in right now to bring you out of that type of life. To bring you out of that situation. Because you are kingdom. 
You a kingdom citizen. You a child of God. You a kingdom citizen. So whatever dark moments have come along in your life, Christ came on in Calvary. Woo! Christ came on in Calvary to cure you. Christ has cured you because he walked into Calvary. You had some dark moments in your life, but God came along. Ah, oh, I feel like preaching right now. I'm feeling good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because God, whatever the dark moments, God has cured you. Whatever those situations, God has cured you. God has taken you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. And so remember, kingdom living is life in the character and the power of God. You got to understand and nudge somebody right now. I got power. I got authority. I got power. I got authority. Christ gave it to you. Why? Because he ascended. Woo, I ain't left the text yet. He ascended into heaven and he seated. Oh, remember, it was the Father who sent the Son. That's the Trinity, beloveds. And so Christ sent the Holy Ghost to stay here forever. Oh, there's a kingdom waiting on you because you are born again, blood-bought believer. You got to understand you are a kingdom citizen and somebody has to know Christ is in your life. Oh, maybe there's someone today, beloveds, that don't know Christ the way maybe you do. Maybe there's somebody today that doesn't know kingdom living. I know this is a level seven sermon. Between one to ten, this will be a level seven, eight sermon. And maybe somebody can help somebody else on today. To help them to say, what is Reverend Pastor Smith saying? All I'm saying is, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All the other stuff was to teach. Somebody needed to get fed today. Somebody needed to get some meat. Somebody needed to just accept salvation. Maybe that's somebody in your family. Maybe it's someone on your job. Beloveds, maybe it's someone who's listening right now. Maybe someone wants to be redeemed. Maybe someone wants to repent. Maybe someone wants to rededicate their life back to Christ. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I know I've gone in the wrong path, but I accept Jesus Christ as my risen Savior. He died on Calvary just for me. And so whatever my dark moments, whatever my situations, I understand kingdom living because he lives in my heart because I accept him right now as my risen Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus has died and God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you are saved. The Bible tells us that Jesus came to demonstrate his love for us, yet while we were still sinners, he died for us. The Bible tells us we all have gone wrong. We all have fallen short. Of the glory of God, Romans 3 and 23. Beloveds, all you had to do is accept him on today. That's real. That's real. Christ gave his life. So acceptance of Christ gives kingdom life. You got kingdom life now. Once you accepted Jesus Christ, that's kingdom living from the inside out. Well, that's all I have for you on today. God bless you all. We love you. Woo! 
Click like, tell somebody, share this word. Go on our YouTube page. Tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you in your life. Be that witness for Jesus. Here's your benediction. May God hear you when you call. May God lift you if you fall. May God bless you as you stand. May God continue to hold you in the palm of his hand. God bless you. I'm Pastor K here at Faith Christian Church in the heart of Bedford, Texas. In the heart of Bedford, Texas, between Dallas and Fort Worth. Until we talk and pray again about the love of Jesus. God bless you. And enjoy your blessed Sunday morning. Knowing that Christ opened your heart for him today. And every day is a good day for Christ rather than without him. Bye-bye.